In this example of whether to repot or not an orchid when you cannot see the roots, we're dealing with a very, very big orchid. This is Sologeny pandorata. This series is to extrapolate the information that gets tucked into repotting videos, which is not everybody's cup of tea because every repot pretty much is the same. However, there's always certain differences with what the characteristics of a pot are like. And for that reason, I am making this little series so that every example gets some attention and you don't sit through a repot if you choose not to watch a repot video. Now, clearly you can see that this pot is not a clear pot. I cannot see what's going on in the pot. I don't know whether the roots are viable or not. I have no indicator whether this orchid, because of the roots, needs a clean up or if I could just leave her alone. She is pot bound, but that doesn't really mean anything. That could be dead roots entangled in the pot. The only real clear visual that I have at the surface at this point in time is the fact she's growing a new growth right up against the edge of the pot. That is a big determining factor to get into a pot and either do an up pot or a repot so that this new growth can have space to develop and grow to full size. These structures are not small. So of course that is like, duh, of course this orchid needs to be repotted. So what's the big deal? But what if this orchid were, for example, to be in a pot that was big enough and this growth could actually mature without any issues, but you don't have clear pots and you don't know what's going on in the pot is the root system healthy? And that is what we're going to test. And before we actually fill up the pot, we can also check the flex of the pot to see if there's any give in the media at all. And I hope that you can see that my leka is actually moving at the surface. So that really tells us that the climate of the pot is still intact in here. Just a little bit of a squeeze. She feels quite solid, but there is enough space. There is flex in the pot adding some water to the pot and looking for the signs as to how the climate of the pot is inside without even having to unpot the orchid. Lots and lots of bubbles. Let's fill the pot up a little bit more, big pot, and see what happens. So in the first pouring in of the water, I had a lot of bubbles. That's great. That means the climate of the pot is just perfect. I had the bubbles, I had the gargling. The media is not super compact, meaning when I flush this orchid, I get plenty of aeration through the pot. Nothing is really stagnant, which would then mean that if the new growth wasn't up against the edge of the pot, I would leave Sologeny pandorata in this pot for another year, maximum. No more than that, because now we also have to consider the history of this orchid. How long has it been in this pot? And in my case, it's been two years. So when it comes to this kind of a setup, like a self-watering, it doesn't mean that you can just up pot every single time. You do have to go in and do a deep clean of the root ball every once in a while, just to maintain the healthy climate in the pot so that there's always an oxygen exchange, especially when you pour water through the pot. So two years ago, this orchid was only an up pot. That means that the center of the root ball has been in this setup and the media for three years, plenty of time. The difference between a Sologeny pandorata and for example, a Cattleya that has much more sturdier, stronger roots, thicker and fleshier is that Sologeny pandorata roots are pretty, pretty thin. And normally I don't extend my pot life anywhere beyond three years before going in for a deep clean. When it comes to thin roots and orchid pots and inorganic media, thin roots, can extend the lifespan of your pot for another year because they will not be occupying the space as quickly as fat chunky roots would. But seeing as my new growth is right up against the edge of the pot, I am going in and this orchid will be repotted in a separate video. And then if you decide when that video airs, the link of that video, the repot video, will be in the description if you so choose to have a look at that one and see what the root ball actually looks like. To my naked eye, it looks promising. And if I had space in the pot, I wouldn't repot it for another year. So I hope that this was helpful as another example of thinner roots in a pot, how long you can extend the lifespan of the pot. 
And if it has to be three years, as long as there's bubbles and you hear the gargling as you pour the water in while you're soaking the orchid, your pot is perfectly fine for another single growth for another year when it comes to thin roots. I really need to emphasize that thin roots can extend the lifespan of an orchid in a pot of self-watering semi-hydro. Right now, her soak is calcium, magnesium and seaweed because, as I mentioned, I have every intention of repotting this orchid. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.